Let, let's talk about uh, the hot topic then. So you've probably covered it on some of your shows. I know you said you mentioned it uh, with uh, Chris Van Vliet, and it's obviously affected the wrestling show you were going to be watching uh, over in Australia, um, which didn't go ahead. And obviously it's, it's the coronavirus pandemic that's kind of hitting everywhere around the world and uh, we're all being told to you know keep our distance two meters apart from from everybody and uh, um, but 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 wrestling has been hit as well um, and especially such an important time of the year BJ looks only two weeks away from from Wrestlemania now just a week ago seven days ago when I was recording my last episode with Alexi Helms Wrestlemania was was uh, was on it was off there were so many rumors about what was going to happen to it uh, then you know uh, it, it's been uh, changed to uh, the, the, the PC uh, to the performance center uh, and now it's recently been changed to a, a two-day WrestleMania so they can obviously not have so many performers in one location at any one time uh, the card is, is getting bigger and uh, much like Wrestle Kingdom from January it's always good to kind of spread a, a big event like Wrestle Kingdom or WrestleMania over two days I think it makes it a bit more palatable but there's obviously health reasons why they're doing that uh, but uh, uh, what's your kind of current thoughts on the ever-changing situation um, th- th- that we currently know about WrestleMania then? Because it does seem to be changing on a daily basis, sometimes on an hourly basis regarding what's happening with the show it- show itself and the other shows that are meant to be going on around WrestleMania itself in Tampa. But uh, well, what's your kind of thoughts and where's your head at regarding WrestleMania at the moment? Uh, I'm... For the fact that we're get, getting anything at all, I am so grateful for. The situation itself sucks for the fans yeah. that we're going to go that don't get to go. It sucks for the wrestlers who were relying on that payday. It, the whole situation sucks for the fact that was. I am grateful Vince McMahon is one stubborn bastard. Yeah. <laughs> because if he wasn't as stubborn as he was, he probably would have cancelled. But the show's going on, and we couldn't ask for much more than that. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but I'm pretty sure it's been announced that it's going to happen from two locations mm, or multiple yeah. locations. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, and there's also uh, news that they could be pre recording some of the matches and, and pre recording them well in advance of the fourth and fifth when they're airing uh, on the WWE Network and pay per view, of course. And uh, mm-hmm. when you look at potentially the, I don't know, the Randy Orton versus Edge match, I think they've, if they described it as a, as a street fight or a last man standing match, um, but that potentially could be filmed in a backstage area somewhere. I mean, if you think back to, I can't remember which WrestleMania it was, but gold dust versus roddy piper and that backlot brawl um you know that was filmed in advance but um kind of visualizing that sort of scenario possibly playing out for one or two of these matches and um but but yeah i mean when you look at uh recent episodes of raw and smackdown they've been you know aired live in front of zero fans uh, with more backstage segments, more backstage angles and in-ring promos as opposed to actual matches. Um, but I've got, as you said, I've got to give credit to WWE. You know, they, they continue to do what they've always done well and putting content out there for the fans um, and, uh, you know, put, putting smiles on people's faces where a lot of companies are being forced to stop their shows or, you know, not being able to provide the content that they usually do. WWE and AEW, we more about AEW in a bit, but they're still pumping out the content and a lot of people are kind of saying well it's it's not great content but it's content nonetheless and they're doing their best when all the other you know franchises in america the nba the nfl xfl and whoever else are closing down operations for however many weeks or months wwe is still putting something out they're putting smiles on people's faces during this you know this very testing time um you know a lot of people are describing it as uncharted territory it is we, we've never known a time like this where sporting events and uh, wrestling events are being cancelled at the drop of a hat um I, I don't know if you caught it on youtube on monday or, or whenever it dropped on your time but uh, no fans monday which was uh, broadcast live on youtube uh through wrestle talk and it was meant to be their, their first wrestling event in did go ahead with the help of Will Ospreay and of course Will Ospreay fought B Priestley in the main event and uh, a whole host of the top names and many brilliant up and coming talent from the UK in the scene and not forgetting the, the Aussie Arrow of course, uh, Carl Fletcher was part of it uh, but um you know that they benefited uh by the the proceeds of the super chats and the donations uh going to the talent as part of that show um but uh, i mean that that's one of the kind of wrestling events that have been designed to help benefit a lot of indie indie workers indie wrestling 
was you able to catch that if so what were your what were your thoughts or what have you heard about it and uh i've seen it it was a very good show the main event was very good with osprey he didn't hold back against his girlfriend b Priestley, but uh pretty good show yeah I, I haven't seen the whole thing yet i started to watch it but unfortunately as the past week um work has really gotten in the way of me catching a lot of content i now that it's sort of started to settle down, the audit that I've been preparing for is all over and done with yeah. for at least a month or so. Then we go back into hyperdrive again. I'm probably going to get catch up on some sleep. And with this virus, if it, if everything shuts down like we think it will, and that include will probably include work as well, um, then I'm going to have hours on end to watch content. But yeah. no, I've seen some highlights on Twitter. I've seen some highlights on YouTube. I think I watched the first match and it was incredible. And the, commenta- the commentators, they do so well to draw the attention to the match and take away from the focus away from the empty crowd. And the highlights that I did see on Twitter and YouTube and all that and um, like uh, what culture and cultaholic you're right he really didn't hold back and i remember seeing some people on youtube go complain about and whatever it was and osprey's obviously come out and said i've seen my girlfriend take on bigger and better people than me and beat the absolute living heck out of him and i'm like it's the impacts yes are real but they do use techniques we all know this to soften blows there is a certain extent of realism a certain extent of kayfabe at least they're doing it. We're still getting content. We just yeah. need to stop being fussy and being picky and stay positive. It'll get back to normality soon. Yeah. But but as I mentioned earlier, along with the WWE and AEW and one or two other uh, promotions, they are still putting out content where a lot of other sporting organizations and franchises have shut up shop uh, shop essentially for the next however many months um but um i mean looking at kind of AEW and what they was able to achieve this wednesday on dynamite and i know we're going to talk more about AEW very very soon in our kind of recap of this week's show um but but they they did something different to what raw and smackdown have been doing and they they had you know a, a, a cast of wrestlers around the front row around ringside and they were kind of there to, to boo and to cheer the matches and they really interact with the matches and the talent involved in some of the matches uh but more importantly that they, they had the hard camera facing the stage facing the big screen and the entrance tunnels you could see all the pyro and that that really kind of was was a, a different way of doing it instead of focusing the hard camera or the camera into you know rows and rows of empty seats uh, but mm-hmm. i thought that was quite refreshing and um you know, i'm just kind of thinking ahead to wrestlemania i mean wwe are quite regimented in terms of where they have their hard camera are they going to have to kind of look at what AEW did on wednesday and maybe mix things up a little bit or what do you think wwe can do maybe a novel quite a unique approach to make wrestlemania different to what we've seen from Raw and SmackDown over the last couple of weeks? Well, I remember um, they've done, obviously done WrestleMania at Madison Square Garden before, and I've heard a rumour that they may be looking at booking it as one of their other locations. But they've done the hard camera at Madison Square Garden before for the Royal Rumble of 2008. I think they did a Raw at Madison Square Garden where they used a hard camera as well. Yeah, And the last couple of times I've been there, uh, they even had that Big Show versus Brock Lesnar special at MSG. And they had the full-on stage and everything. But the best wrestling events at Madison Square Garden is where they've had those little doors open and they didn't really have the runway. And that's what I want to see them go back to. Yeah, I think that would be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, that would be pretty cool and pretty unique. Um, But I do think they need to give us a different presentation, a different look, a different feel when it comes to WrestleMania. And, um, you know, hopefully they kind of think on their feet and and give us something outside of the building, maybe give us something uh, uh, unique, or even if they just kind of copy AEW and put some wrestlers in the front row just to boo and to cheer and to give us that kind of uh, interaction, which is what we've been lacking on Raw and SmackDown recently. And uh, going back to another comment you made, that the commentary team for WWE, you know, has really kind of made the difference as well. 
Have they been, uh, you know, being a bit more light-hearted, a bit more jovial on commentary and uh, having Asuka str- screaming at the talent <laughs> or, 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 or Triple H taking the mickey out of Michael Cole has always been quite refreshing. And having Mojo Rowley there uh, being, being uh, Mr. Hype extraordinaire. But uh, it's all good as far as I'm concerned. And like I say, the content from WWE might not be the, the greatest at the moment, but under the circumstances, it's fantastic they're being able to put anything out, to be honest with you. Um, now, as I mentioned, we're going to be talking a lot more AEW and NXT very very soon um, but uh, we've not heard too much BJ about whether they're actually going to whether we're going to see any of the matches that's previously been advertised for TakeOver Tampa at any point soon so I mean you probably watched this week's NXT just the same as I did and it was a very kind of promo heavy very kind of segment uh, backstage segment heavy uh, video package heavy NXT this week and there was no matches uh, but there's been some reports that TakeOver and the Hall of Fame have been cancelled altogether. Um, and let's be honest, we've not heard to the contrary, to be honest with you. And other reports to say that Hall of Fame, the inductions might take place over SummerSlam weekend or that they could use the, you know, the Raws and the Smackdowns post-WrestleMania to have some of the induction speeches to fill out some of the time. But but going back to TakeOver Tampa, you know, they've been a little bit cagey and keeping the cards very close to their chest regarding some of the matches that we was expecting to take over Tampa as to whether the show is going ahead at all or whether they might throw some of the matches into the WrestleMania card, which is looking unlikely the closer we get to WrestleMania. But uh, any thoughts about NXT and TakeOver and whether we might see Gargano versus Champa or some of the other matches previously advertised? Well, I ended up watching the highlights for AEW um, later in the week. We'll talk about that later. Because... I'm a loyal NXT fan, so while everyone's watching AEW this week because there's using the excuse there's no matches on NXT, it's all AEW. I'm still watching NXT because they had that um, Gargano Champa special, and I got highly invested in seeing the rivalry from their different perspective point of views, and it really added to that rivalry as well. Like it made it so much more personal, and. Even if, like, NXT TakeOver is not happening, but if they put it on the WrestleMania card, or if they maybe even wait, like, we don't know when we're going to get NXT TakeOver. Mm. We, they might produce it on a... They might have a sole two hours of NXT dedicated to a match of Champa versus um, Gargano, where it literally starts the show, ring the bell, and two hours later, you finally get a pinfall. Yeah. That would be a first to two hour match. <laughs> it would be it would be pretty good, but I think they could definitely pull it off. But when I've heard the same, whereas uh, the the NXT that would be scheduled for Wednesday the first of April, um, so it'd be the last NXT before to dare I say it, Takeover Tampa or WrestleMania, that, that that could be the replacement for Takeover uh, Tampa, and that they could host some of the matches that were scheduled for Takeover on that final episode of NXT on the first of April. So if they do that, that'd be pretty cool. I mean, looking at this week's NXT which we'll be delving into in a bit more detail very soon. You know, they did have, you know, hype packages there for Gargano and Champa. They did have uh, a video package featuring Finn Balor where he was still challenging Walter, which we presume would have been a, a, a scheduled match for TakeOver Tampa. Um, so, you know, they've obviously still got some ideas in the works for hosting these matches somewhere down the line but they haven't announced if and when they're going to take place and obviously things are very much up in the air so we're waiting to see uh what happens and hopefully we'll find out more on wednesday but uh yeah let's i'm quite intrigued because we haven't really heard we, we've heard quite a bit about wrestlemania we've heard a lot about the shows that have been cancelled but we haven't heard much about hall of fame or takeover they haven't officially or formally announced those two or what's happening with those two shows at all as far as i'm aware um but um Let's have a closer look at where we are with WrestleMania then, BJ, before we break down uh, uh, AEW and NXT from this week, because the, the matches that have been announced, and there's more matches being announced all the time, they've obviously been sectioned off into their individual days. So we know that WrestleMania has been split over two days. Uh, we're going to be getting several matches on the 4th of April, which is the Saturday, and uh, the rest of the matches, the rest of the card, the following day on the 5th of April. So how are the cards looking at the moment? You've got uh, night one, uh, you've got uh, Kevin Owens versus Seth Rollins, which is going to be an awesome match. Uh, the Undertaker versus AJ Styles. 
Rhea Ripley and Charlotte for the NXT Women's Championship and Brock Lesnar versus Drew McIntyre McIntyre is going to headline night one for the Universal Championship. Uh, Then on the Sunday night two, we've got John Cena uh, against The Fiend. That'll be a pretty cool match. Uh, Becky Lynch versus Shayna Baszler for the Raw Women's Championship. Goldberg versus Roman Reigns for the... uh, That's for the the Universal Championship. Um, And... uh, Randy Orton versus Edge, their last man standing match is also expected to take place on the Sunday. Now, for anybody that's seen SmackDown from last night, there was a, a few of the matches which haven't been formally announced, but kind of it looks like they're going to go ahead. You've got a, a six pack challenge featuring uh, women on the SmackDown brands uh, going up against uh, Bailey. So I think the women women that have been announced, you've got Dana Brooke, you've got Lacey Evans, uh, Sasha Banks, Tamina, and Naomi, and of course Bailey is the champion. King Corbin going up against Elias. And um, you've obviously going to have a multi T match for the SmackDown tag team titles. And uh, one match that hasn't been formally announced, but it looks like we're going to be getting at Mania, is going to be Sami Zayn putting his Intercontinental Championship on the line against Daniel Bryan, which, if it does get formally announced, will be the match that I will be most looking forward to over the end two days. But looking at the matches that we've just uh, announced there um, for night one and night two, we think that we know at the moment then, BJ. What where's your kind of head at regarding WrestleMania, the event then? So it's going to be over two days, most of it from the Performance Center, as far as we're aware. Is it still an event that you're looking forward to? Is there things that you're not looking forward to? Um, where's your kind of anticipation levels for WrestleMania as it stands at the moment then? Oh, absolutely. I'll be watching WrestleMania regardless of how it goes down. If they have one match for six hours, I'd probably like zone in and out while on twitter but i'd still be watching it it's wrestling it's one of my favorite things in the world yeah i'm not and it's like we've said before it's a time that we've never gone through and how they're gonna um react to it essentially we don't know and that's part of what makes it exciting and i want to see how they do it Mm. because it's just that curiosity but yeah i've been looking at the matches on the wikipedia page because i'm looking at when I typed WrestleMania 36 in, it says WrestleMania 36 will be at 7.30 a.m. Monday, 6th of April, 2020. But that's obviously based off um, Australian standard time. And you go down to the matches and there's um, the six-pack challenge that you said um, yeah. with Bailey, which I'm actually surprised to mean is in the match because they haven't used it. I, I think a lot of people are surprised she's in the match. Most definitely. She's, she's awful. <laughs> Like, I think she's got the talent. She just doesn't get used. Yeah, I, I just think she's very, very bland. And I was very surprised to see her included. And I'm sure it's going to be an attempt at maybe a little bit of a mini push for her. But um, I, I can't imagine that they'll we'll see much of her after WrestleMania. I thought it would have been a good opportunity, a really good opportunity to, instead of having Tamina there, maybe having it the return of Nia Jax. And whether she's going to come out and interfere during the match or during any of the matches. But I would have thought that would have been an ideal opportunity to get uh, Nia Jax back in there. Apparently she's fully fit. She's been cleared and ready to go. So she's been posting pictures on Instagram. She looks great. Um, so, uh, but uh, yeah, I, maybe Tamina was thrown in there at the last minute because somebody uh, isn't fit or isn't clear to wrestle. I don't know. But uh, um, I, 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 I'll be honest with you, I'm not a fan of hers. And I'm surprised that she's still with the company. I really, really am. But so that's just my personal feeling. Um, and people can hate me for that. But uh, <laughs> but, 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 but it is going to be a very unique WrestleMania, isn't it? It's going to, and like you say, you know, if you've been wrestling fans for as long as we have, BJ, you know, you're know you going to watch it regardless because, let's be honest, there isn't any or many other sporting events happening at the moment. But WrestleMania is, is a tradition. If you're a, a, a diehard, hardcore wrestling fans like we are, you're going to watch it regardless. And the fact that it's spread over two days is going to kind of add to the enjoyment. I'm just gutted by the looks of it that we're not going to get an NXT takeover because they're always kind of the best shows on offer around that time. Um, but um, And I think spreading it over two days will make it seem you know bigger, maybe more important, more unique. Uh, but I'm more interested, as I mentioned earlier, about the presentation, how it's going to look, how they're going to set it up which way the camera's going to be facing and so whether there's going to be anybody there uh, to kind of cheer or boo the participants in the ring during the matches. But it's all very interesting. And I think that's possibly another few reasons why we should tune in and watch it and kind of uh, see how it's going to go down. I'm sure they got some surprises up their sleeve. I'm sure it's going to be a good one. Um, but like I say, it's just going to be a shame. 
dream that we're not going to have the pyro, we're not going to have the 80,000 people in the packed out stadium. Um, and that's uh, something we're going to have to wait another year for, fingers crossed. Uh, fingers crossed we haven't got the same scenario in 12 months' time, BJ, because that would just be that would be a really rubbish scenario as wrestling fans. Uh, but hopefully it'll all be done yeah. and dusted by early, early summertime. Well, they were talking about, like, this could be going on for a year if they find a cure at all. Like, there's been talks of it may go from pandemic to endemic, which means there won't be a cure and we're just going to have to live with it, which... <laughs> That's definitely not something I want to happen. No. Um, the other thing we're probably going to miss out on as well is um, the Battle Royales. Yes. I don't think they're going to go ahead. I think that's um, a, a given, really, because of the number of people you'll have in the ring at any one time. And obviously, they're trying to minimise the amount of people in the building at any one time. And I think they're, they're limited to maybe 50 personnel including wrestlers um in the uh, premises at any one time uh, so if that's the performance center it's not uh, a massive place in itself i'm sure they have more than 50 um trainees they're stu- uh, uh, training at any one time and on any given day but um yeah i think that that would blow that uh, figure of 50 uh, well out of the water if they were to have the battle rules i'm expecting those to get the chop straight away and uh, no, no bad thing as far as i'm concerned they're usually on the kick the pre-show so um yeah just stick to the kind of you know the, the actual wrestling matches and i'll be happy with that but um you know we, we spoke briefly earlier bj about independent wrestling you've got to spare a thought for all the independent wrestling companies and the independent wrestlers all around the world who are currently unable to earn any money from their regular bookings, as well as all the, the indie promotions who are planning to put on shows around the Tampa Bay area across WrestleMania week. And of course, the organizers of WrestleCon, you've probably heard about this due to contractual obligations or the situation with the hotel, the Marriott, where WrestleCon was due to take place. The organizers of WrestleCon were likely to lose out on over, well over $100,000, which will likely you know, put a pay to any future WrestleCon events in the years to come. Um, I know the organisers having to potentially sell his house and he could go bankrupt from the whole situation of not being able to get um, the, the, the refund, um, you know, because of situations out of his control. It's, you know, it's, it's nothing to do with the organisers of WrestleCon and the fact he's going to lose out on $100,000 is really, really bad. But, uh, you know, my thoughts also go out to all the, the wrestlers and the promotions who are having to cancel shows and bookings for the foreseeable future due to the virus. And, and, and you know, to my listeners, and I'm sure... BJ said the same to his listeners, please, you know, go out of your way and continue supporting your favourite indie workers and your favourite indie promotions by visiting their social pages and purchasing merchandise and whatever you can do on their social pages to keep them relevant and to, you know, I don't know, like yourself, BJ and me, we're trying to get interviews organised with uh, with, with independent wrestlers just to kind of you know keep them relevant get the name out there give them a bit more promotion a bit more pu- publicity but uh you know any, any final thoughts before we move on bj regarding you know the cancellation of all the other shows around wrestlemania weekend and indie promotions having to put their their performances on hold for however long um and you've got the whole wrestlecon situation but uh, any final thoughts on on what i've just said there i think you pretty much said it all because like i definitely feel from and it's like a worldwide thing as well. Like obviously, all the WrestleCon promo- had to be postponed or cancelled. We've had cancellations all around. The one that I was meant to go to got postponed. Yeah. Um, Body Murphy's former promotion. Um, he used to be known as Matt Silver, and the one person he trained, who I also interviewed last year, um, Adam Brooks. He was meant to make his debut in Ring of Honor, but he came from. They both came from um, a promotion in melbourne called mcw and they've had to basically cancel all future upcoming events and it looks like their next event may be july but they said it's at this point it's not guaranteed they're gonna it's gonna go ahead at the moment but it's still go as they take it as it comes basically yeah yeah Um, what's the independent wrestling like there or even nxt uk what's it like over there um well 
NXT UK, I think they've got uh, episodes taped that will see them through until the end of April, which is when the next NXT UK takeover was due to take place in Dublin. Now, I'm guessing that that's been cancelled and that was meant to be headlined uh, by Walter versus Ilya Dragunov and Finn Balor versus Tyler Bates, from what I understand, having read the spoilers from the latest set of tapings leading us up to that takeover, of course, which now won't go ahead. So I'm guessing they're going to continue running the, 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 uh, the taped stuff. But after that, I I don't know whether they're going to be able to record any more for the foreseeable future. Um, so obviously TakeOver Dublin is on hold. That probably won't take place for several months now. Um, but as for indie wrestling, much the same. I mean, I'm seeing posts from uh, independent uh, workers and independent promoters on Facebook and social media all the time about shows having to be cancelled. So I don't think that there's any shows running this weekend in the UK to the best of my knowledge. And I think everybody in the UK, all the wrestling promotions, all the indie promotions are following the government's advice over here in the UK and uh, basically, yeah, shutting down shop, essentially. Um like all the industries pretty much in the UK, I think, uh, you know, apart from some key workers like, uh, you know, the, 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 the fire brigade, the police, the, the nurses, the hospitals, um, people that work in the, you know, the food and the toiletry uh, industry are being told that they have to work certain certain i think mo the majority of the schools are closed down as well but uh, wrestling has definitely taken it um taken the hit and yeah i don't think there's going to be any wrestling of any sorts in the uk at all i mean you've got companies like ott over in ireland they had to cancel their big show last weekend that was going to be headlined by david Starr and john moxley that didn't go ahead and yeah i'm just seeing posts pop up all the time bj on, on social media about how uh, there's cancellations and you know they'll hope hope to be back up and running again soon so it's a real kind of sorry state so taking me back to one of my earlier comments it's, it's good that you've got companies like the wwe and AEW that are continuing to you know uh put out their live content or even recorded content um you know for the enjoyment of the fans so at least as wrestling fans we have something to go back on and of course with the wwe network you've got hundreds of thousands um of, of hours worth of footage and all the pay-per-views you can shake a stick at and all the excellent documentary specials they do to go back and watch um but wrestling for the next six months is going to be very very interesting and uncharted territories and uh, a very unique time um so i mean i've been wrestling fan for 30 years and i've never known a situation like it so uh, it's certainly one to tell our grandchildren about in uh, you know in, in 20 years time about how there was uh, a, a wrestlemania behind closed doors um in 2020 but uh, very very interesting